Hi YouTube, let's create. To start to make the rocking chair, you're gonna need hot glue, wood glue, paint or stain of your choice, paint brushes, and about 25 clothespins. To begin, you're gonna disassemble, oh, about 10 clothespins. Super simple, just pull them apart and that little spring should just slide right off. After you're done disassembling, put those springs to the side for later, we can make something with those. Grab your wood glue, put a little bit out, grab a paintbrush, match up a couple clothespins to make sure they're the same size. Not all Dollar Tree clothespins are created equal. And put a thin smear of wood glue down the back of the clothespin. Push them together, wipe away any stuff that comes out the sides, and put it to the side to dry. If you happen to have clothespins with a gap, my recommendation is taking another clothespin or a clamp and putting them together until they dry. This will make sure that there's a bond in between. After you've got your clothespins, go ahead and grab two of them and one half of a clothespin. You can see here that I'm measuring them out, putting the base of the clothespins down on the back of the clothespin, half. Obviously, it's a uh, very simple it's just apparently i have no words to explain it go ahead and put some wood glue on there grab your glue gun and you're going to put just a couple dots in between think of it as heidi sonbull says a short-term long-term hold take your first clothespin use the back well you know the pincher sides and put that on that end of the clothespin you want to make that gap where it's rounded, butt up against the bottom of the half clothespin. Next, you're gonna put a little bit of wood glue on the other side of the clothespin. And again, with the hot glue, a couple dots, grab another of your glued together clothespins and putting the pincher side up against the end of the first double clothespin and press down. This will form the rocking part of your rocking chair. You're going to want to make two of these. Once your two rockers are assembled, go ahead and put one off to the side and you're gonna grab another glued together clothespin on the pinching part that holds it to the line you're going to put on one side some hot glue and on the other side some wood glue go ahead and grab the bottom of the rocker and you're going to place it there just after the rounded part try and get it to go straight up and down and you're going to do this for both of the rocking bases just showing you here what it'll look like Next, you're gonna lay that down on its side and then taking a little bit of wood glue, you're gonna put some on the hole and on the other side of the hole, you're gonna put some hot glue. Take one of the half clothespins and go ahead and line it up flush against the front of the rocker, rocker mechanism. Push it down into place and then flip it over. Repeat this process on the other side and then repeat for the other rocking chair rocker side you know i never thought talking to myself this much would be so intimidating but yeah being my first video i don't have anybody who's a subscriber to talk to so i'm basically talking to myself and i'm feeling kind of silly here you can see there will be a little gap in between which is good you want that after you've got the two pieces assembled, you're gonna lay one off to the side, grab a glued together piece of, or a glued together set of clothespins, and you're going to put some wood glue over the holes, and then you're going to slide it in where that gap is. Now, don't worry about the arms of the rocker, I guess they're called runners, sliding down because you're gonna take a little bit of hot glue at the bottom where it meets the rocker and glue it into place. 
because you had the hot glue up at the top, it should hold it in place nice and sound for you while that wood glue dries. Okay, now you're gonna grab another half clothespin, put a little bit of hot glue and a little bit of wood glue on there, just at the long part that you would grasp and pinch to hang your clothes on the line. And we're going to make the back portion of the rocker now. Go ahead and line those up and you're going to have the divot match approximately at the top of where the double clothes pin ends. Repeat for the other side. Now you see I'm taking a little bit of hot glue and wood glue, and I'm gonna take another half of a clothespin and lay it across the back. This will begin bracing for the seat portion of the chair. Try to make it as flush as you can to the outside edge. Then, grabbing the other piece that you should have already made, you're going to glue it to the other side of the clothespin. This will give you your base. Grabbing another half of a clothespin, you're going to repeat the same process, but this time on the front of the chair. Um, make sure you flip the clothespin around so that it's the opposite of what you did. So if the bumpy part was on the back, straight across from it, it should be the flat part. And if the flat part was on the back, straight across from it should be the bumpy part. Here you see I'm just taking five clothespin halves and lying them out across the base of the chair. This obviously is gonna be the seat. I just wanna make sure that they fit and when I go ahead and glue them all in, I won't have to squish anything in there, work extra hard to make it happen. I take some more wood glue and I go ahead and put it across the front. Then, once that's done, I'm gonna start taking those half clothes pins and then on the inside part, that hooks over the rope when you actually use it as a clothes pin, that's gonna go over the front portion of the chair. I put a little hot glue in the back and this will keep it stable and ready for it to start taking the clothes pin. Again, short term, long term hold. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and continue with the other four pieces straight across. I typically will go the far left, the far right, the middle, and then one on either side, and that will give me a fairly decent spacing. If you did it right, all those little lines should line up. Imagine that. And here's the rocking seat set up. Next come the arms of the rocker. Go ahead and put a little bit of wood glue in that first divot underneath the round part. This is gonna be like the hand part where you rest your hands when the rocking chair is in place. Uh, put some wood glue on the divot and then on the back of it, put some hot glue and then you're going to press it into place. You may have to move the wood a little bit, but it shouldn't break it. If it does or something pops loose, that's why God made hot glue. Quick, easy, instant repair. You're going to do that for both sides. Now you see here I took another half clothespin and I'm laying it across the back of the chair. This is where we're going to put the backrest. So with the chair face down, I put a little bit of wood glue on each of the sides and then you'll see I'll put a little bit of hot glue Again, short-term, long-term hold. By the end of this video, you're gonna have that memorized and you're gonna find that it's so useful in all your crafts. Go ahead and take the half clothespin, bumpy side out, flat side up against the back rails of the chair. Make it as flush as you can to the top and sides. Press it into place and it should look like this. 
Here I'm gonna take some more wood glue. I'm not gonna really use hot glue this time because the chair should, for the most part, if I lay it on its back to dry, have no problem gluing the back rust to the back strut. I'm not sure what the terminology is, but you can see what I'm doing here. And voila, you have a chair back. Yay, everybody cheer. If you look at the back, the notches should line up against the top of the back of the chair, the runner. Now I'm just taking a little hot glue and putting it along the front bottom where the seat is, just to make sure that nothing untoward happens. If you've got little people running around, something untoward could happen. Here, you'll just see I'm going in with a little bit of hot glue if anything popped up or came off. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and take some chalk paint and give the chair a nice coat of white. And that's what it looks like all painted up. Top, bottom, front, sides, left, right, and in between. Now I'm gonna take some chalk paint in color black and I'm gonna go ahead and give it a dry, dry brushing. Unfortunately, I was a little heavy handed and ended up having to repaint. It turned a nice shade of gray and I'm happy with that. Okay, it's pillow time. So you're gonna need hot glue, chalk, cotton balls, yarn, a roller, and a pair of scissors. Oh, and scrap fabric, of course. Using the ruler, go ahead and measure out the width of your rocking chair. Mine comes to about five and a half centimeters. Take your scrap fabric. This was a bandana I got from the Dollar Tree. I'd cut it up and used it in another project, but still had a fairly good piece left over. What you see me doing here is taking the roller and putting it about dead center of that flower and then at two and a half centimeters on both sides I'm going to add an additional half centimeter giving me three centimeters on both sides. Mark it with the chalk, spin it around, and repeat. So I should have I would say a pillow that's about six by six centimeters. Once I have that all mapped out, oh, here I'm just showing you sometimes fabric has a front and a back side. You need to choose, do you want the brighter side or the duller side? I am doing a two-tone, so one side is dull and one side is bright, depending on the season or the mood that I'm in. Go ahead and line those flowers up, and then you're going to take your hot glue gun and make seams. You're gonna do this for three seams, leaving one end open because obviously that's where you're gonna stuff and flip your pillow. Uh, one thing you wanna keep in mind when you're working in miniature with fabric, please make sure to use small print fabric. That way it's not overpowered or lost or confusing to the eye when you actually use it in your display. Okay, so uh, you saw me using a pair of scissors and running across the seam. Hot glue can be very hot, and I would hate for you to burn your hands off. So don't do that. Use finger protectors or the end of your scissors or makeup spatulas like Holly Humble uses in Hot Humble Pie videos. I think I should get one of those because I don't like the scissors so much. It gets them all gummy, and that's just gross. Okay, so you see here that I've got all three sides glued together. Then you're gonna see me go ahead and grab a pair of scissors and just trim it down so that it's about a half a centimeter all the way around. Once that's complete, I'm gonna go ahead and clip the corners.
once everything is trimmed down nice and neat, my corners are flipped, I'm going to go a little bit out of frame here and then come back in real quick because, you know, first time videoing and whatever, and go ahead and flip the pillow to the right side out. You'll see me here. I'm just using the end of a paintbrush to help poke out those corners, try and get them as sharp as I can. Given my druthers, I'd use a sewing machine, but since this is such a small amount of fabric, I thought it'd be silly to take the whole thing out. Next, go ahead and rip apart a couple cotton balls, and this is gonna be your batting. Obviously, you can use real batting or pillow stuffing or leftover yarn or whatever you have on hand that will make a nice, soft, fluffy pillow. Once stuffed, you're going to want to go ahead and turn those seams to the inside and then you're going to just glue together the last line of the pillow. Remember, hot glue is hot and is going to burn your fingers, unless you're like my mom with asbestos hands. I am not yet there. I went ahead and fluffed up my pillow and not too shabby. I kind of like how it dips in on the sides. It, You'll see. All right, next I'm taking a scrap piece of yarn. It's about eight inches long, and I'm just cutting it into four equal segments. Now we're going to make some tassels for our pillow because nothing says farm farmhouse boho like tassels. Take one piece of yarn and tie a knot into it, and then try and make it longer on one side. You're gonna take the short end of the yarn and cut it off. Then, taking a small amount of hot glue, you're going to put it on the corner and then put your little knotted part of the yarn into the hot glue. Kind of wiggle it around to make sure it sticks. Then you're gonna repeat this for the other three sides. Once that's done, trim them down and then start taking apart the yarn. Just pull it apart with your fingers or if you really need to, use a comb and it'll fluff out and look like a little bitty tassel. Super cute. Finally, the book. You're gonna need a ruler, paper, a little bit of ribbon, a piece of cardboard cereal box, pencil, pen, paintbrush, and paint. Oh, and of course scissors. Go ahead and trim the top of the cereal box down. You're gonna want a rectangle, approximately the size of the book you wanted times two, because books fold in half and we're making the cover. You see here, I'm just trying to get them as even as possible. Once you have it cut down, flip it over, make sure there's no glue or whatever, and rip that off, because obviously you don't want that marring your book. Go ahead and grab your ruler, and just shy of about halfway to the middle of your book cover, go ahead and fold it because this is a book, we want it to have some dimension. So we're gonna fold it once, move the ruler over just a little bit, fold it twice, and that should give us a spine. And there you have it, a little book cover with a spine. I'm super pleased with it. Here I'm just trimming off the edge to try and make it as flush as possible. Then I'm gonna take my paper and using the book cover as a guide, grab a pencil and mark out about as tall as the book is. Grab my ruler and go from one edge of the paper to the other and begin making rows. Depending on how thick you want your book or how many books you want will determine how many rows. Once you've got your rows, grab your scissors and go ahead and start cutting the rows apart. using the book as a guide, 
book cover, you're going to want to take your paper and begin accordion folding, you know, the back and forth, back and forth, or I think I've heard mountain and valley fold of your paper. And you're going to continue checking the inside of your book with the amount of paper you have to make sure it fills it up and it makes it as thick or as thin as you'd like it. And lovely. Now you see here, I'm just measuring it to the inside of my book and I do have some overhang. So what I'll do is just grab a pair of scissors and cut it off. You know, make it look as much like a book as I can. Grabbing my Waverly Truffle Paint, chalk paint, and it's a dark brown. I'm just gonna go ahead, once I finally get that cap off, and I'm gonna paint the front and the back of the book cover. Once the book covers dry, I'm going to take some hot glue and run it down the spine of the book. Now you remember that little piece of red ribbon that we had? Yeah, we're going to use that to make a pretty little red ribbon bookmark. Just slide it on in there and there we go. I really need some finger protectors. <laughs> then once that's in place, go ahead and cover that red ribbon again with some hot glue and grab your pages, maybe, hopefully, not completely out of focus forever. No, oh, I kind of flooded the spine. I wanna make sure all those pages get gripped. And go ahead and stick them into the book. If you put enough hot glue, when you open your pages and shake your book, none of them should fall out. Here I'm gonna take some metallic gold uh, by Folk Art and I'm just gonna give a little treatment to the outside of the book and make it extra pretty. You know, gold corners, a little scrawling on the back, a little scrawling on the front, just to look like little tiny words. I don't have any super tiny paintbrushes and even if I did, I don't think my hand is steady enough where I could actually go ahead and uh, write something out. However, with a pencil and my glasses on, I can write something super tiny in a book. Love you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll subscribe and stick around.